Welcome to the tutorial creating extra drawings. So in one of the previous tutorials I mentioned that you should never break down the hand into its fingers and all the individual joints um, because even though there's an infinite number of hand positions that you might want to create for your character that's a very labor-intensive way about going about it. Um, but what we do instead actually is we create extra drawings. Um, and once again, it's really dependent on your individual character, which body parts you would create extra drawings for. For example, uh, one of the characters that we developed was a ballerina, and it had uh, a myriad of different types of feet, obviously because the ballerina is often on point and then back down again, so maybe more than any other character, it had a lot of extra drawings of the feet. Um, the ones that we usually do are the hands. Um, I guess in my case for the rabbit I would do the ears, but that's not necessarily always true. Um, the facial expressions and the mouth. So facial expressions, I mean my blinks, uh, angry eyebrows, things like that. Um, the mouth is actually uh, very particular. You can't just draw whatever you want for the mouth. Uh, Animate Pro has a sound editor that allows you to load in images of different mouths that correspond to different phonemes. Um, and when you record voice, it can actually auto-detect which drawings it should use uh, to have the character look like it's actually saying what the sound recording is saying. So if you want to see a chart of the types of mouths that you should create, you can actually go into the user guide uh, for chapter 13, Working with Sound. It's actually on page 578. So there's a chart at the bottom um, of the eight basic mouth positions in the three-quarter view. Um, and then if you go down a page, there's another character um, looking the other way, three-quarter profile, um, with the, the basic eight, as well as two extra mouth drawings. So we're probably going to create enough space for eight, and with your sample material, you should get the eight drawings and a few extra uh, different hands and eyes as well. So to begin, we're going to create some more cells in the timeline, and let's use the mouth layer as an example. Um, as we know the exact number of extra mouths that we need. So you might be wondering where you should place these extra drawings. Should you place them after the last view that you've drawn? Or should you place them between the views? And the answer is you should actually place these extra drawings between the views. So I'm just going to expand the timeline. And I might actually zoom in to make it bigger as well so it's really, really obvious what I'm doing. So because I know for the front view I need eight mouth positions. I'm going to create a space for eight drawings like this. So what it did is it essentially copied, if you look here, or extended the exposure of the front view for eight frames. Um, and you can see frame number eight right here, so it's indicated in case you're not sure. Um, and the reason that you extend all of your drawings is this. Even if I want the mouth to change for the front position, I most definitely want the rest of the body to look the same. I want it to be the front view so I can see what that mouth looks like on the full front view of the rabbit. But right now, since this exposure has been extended, it's the same drawing. And actually, if we make a change to one of these drawings, I'll give you an example. If I just do this, and then I drag my red playhead across, you'll notice it's in every single frame. So clearly if you change one mouth drawing, it's going to change throughout. It's not going to create a new drawing automatically just because you add a stroke. So what we're going to have to do is actually cut up these cells so that they are considered different individual uh, cells that will contain different individual drawings. And so I'm just scrolling back down to the mouth layer here. I think the easiest way to do that would be to add the timeline toolbar. So you just have to go to the, up to the top to the Windows menu and select Toolbars, Timeline View. And so now we have this Timeline View toolbar. And what we do is we select the cell that we want to break off from the rest, and then we click on this second button here that's called Duplicate Drawing. It's considered this a duplicate because they are at this present moment identical. But if you keep doing this, what you, you're essentially doing is you're allowing yourself to make changes on this individual cell without affecting the drawing on any other cells. And you would do that all the way across, like that. And you're going to do the same thing for the three-quarter view. You want to put eight in there. 
So let's do that. Um, and we're going to do the exact same thing. And once again, if you have to add extra cells or whatever, you can always do that by dragging and then doing this. So don't worry if you don't get the precise number the first time. I'm just using this as an example because we happen to know the precise number that we need. And then for the last view, we'll probably only need about three. So for the last row, I can't pull it any further to extend the exposure. I actually have to select from the top to the bottom to select them all and say extend exposure. And it'll let me extend it to frame 20. And you can overwrite or insert. So overwrite would obviously overwrite what's already there. And insert will, if there's already cells over here, it'll push those cells over and then insert the new, uh, the new number of cells needed. So it extended it to 20 like that. Okay, so that looks good. So you can see the major divisions are where the lines go all the way down. And that basically shows us the difference in views. And then these minor ones only exist for the mouth. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you about before we start drawing is the naming convention that you're going to use for these extra drawings. So if you go to the library tab, which is usually located behind the tool properties tab, and you look at the drawing substitution window, you'll see that although we're on frame number two, as indicated here as well, frame number two, we actually have drawing number five selected. So if I scroll across, you'll see that there's various drawings you can substitute in here. So here there's no drawing, um, and here it's actually blank because actually no exist, drawing exists for zero. Then if we scroll across to one, uh, we're substituting in the mouth that was first drawn for the front position. Number two is a drawing that was made for the three-quarter profile. Number three is the profile. Um, I'm not sure what four is. It actually looks like this is four because there's no line right there. Uh, and finally, we come to number five, which is it cuts it, which lets you know that it's actually a different drawing that you're substituting in. Um, but this is sort of strange because we're on frame number two, but we're using mouth number five. So we'd like this to probably be a little bit more consistent. We want this to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and we know why this happened. It's because we extended these drawings and inserted these in after the fact, after these first three views had been drawn. Um, but now we'd like to sort of change that so that we have a consistency. So what we normally do is we actually name these drawings with their view denoted first, so F for front, Q for three quarter, P for profile, and then we add a number. So this would be F1, F2, F3, F4, etc. And we can do that for different body parts because the software recognizes that they exist for different layers. So we can have an F1 for the mouth layer and an F1 for the eyes, for example. And the way that you actually rename something is when you select it, and then you go to the top menu and go to Drawing, Rename Drawing. And the keyboard shortcut is Shift-Command-D on Mac. I'm not sure what it is on Windows. I think it must be Shift-Control-D, but you can check by looking beside the menu item. The shortcut should be listed there. And this is the only real way you can rename a drawing. Um, later on, we might work more with the X sheet, and a lot of people make the mistake of double-clicking and then entering a new number into the field to rename and clicking Enter. And what you're doing when you do that is you're actually substituting in a drawing. So we're going to rename this one F1 and say OK. And I'm going to continue doing that down the line. So we'll try one more time. This one will be F2. Let's do one more. Let's use the keyboard shortcut. And this one will be F3. Okay. It looks like right now in the drawing substitution window that the old drawing still exists. This is number six as it should be here, four, five, six. But if we actually scroll past and go to the end, we'll find our, our F drawing. So F1, 2, I think F1, 2, and 3. This one should be now be F3. 
Uh, but if we scroll back again to the front, we'll see that those drawings have disappeared. So there's no more four, five, or six. If you see, it jumps from three to seven. Um, and as we keep renaming, that'll be um, the case. Uh, we just have to scroll back and forth, and it'll get rid of those old numbers and substitute in the new numbers. Um, the last thing that you should know about drawing substitutions is that we rename empty drawings. So if you remember, there are certain views you can't see in the profile view. There are no um, eyes for the right side, which we numbered 01. So there's no eyebrow, eye, um, etc. And so we put in empty drawings. The way that we number empty drawings is we name them 000, so three zeros. And what that does is that pushes that drawing all the way to the front. Um, so when we're looking for drawings, we know where the blank ones are. They're right at the front of the line. So I'm only going to draw one extra drawing for you in this video, and it's going to be the second mouth drawing for the profile view. And that's because I want to show you a little trick to drawing some of the profile mouths. So I'm just going to click down here and show you just the head. So if you see the head of the rabbit, you realize that it's actually almost like a funny shaped circle, you could say. Um, and it's solid here, but some of the mouth drawings that you're going to make are actually going to have an open mouth because as the rabbit is talking, his mouth will be open. Well, if you think about this then, the mouth which layer, which is on top of the head layer, will show the head underneath it when the mouth is open. So you're going to see in that triangular opening of the mouth this yellow part of the head, which is what you don't want, right? You want this to be transparent as he's talking or that section. So I'm going to show you a trick, but just like the joints of the rabbit, um, where you still see this thick black line everywhere, we're not going to resolve the second part of the trick that I'm showing you until we do the rigging. So I'm going to go to the drawing view and click on the mouth, the second mouth position um, from the profile view. And then I'm going to hide everything except for the mouth and the head, and I'm going to turn on the light table so that I can see the head behind as I'm drawing. I'm going to zoom in a bit, and then I'm going to make sure that I have the correct brush, and that I have the black color. So I'm actually just going to erase part of this so I can still see where this is starting from, and use it as a reference point. I could also use the onion skinning to see what's forward and behind. So I can see where the other mouth is, just to make sure that the tip follows where it should.
So I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcuts to disable the onion skinning, but leave the light table on. So the head, which is below the mouth, so you can see in the timeline here, the head is below the mouth, is clearly visible through this pie slice shaped hole in the mouth. And while you're animating, of course, you don't want this to be seen. So the simple trick that we do is we select the stroke tool and we're going to create an invisible stroke like a bubble around the mouth. So something like this and say OK. Then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut D uh, to enable the show hidden strokes. And then I'm going to create a new color in the, uh, the color palette. And I'm going to make it something really obvious like a yeah like a fluorescent green like this something that you would never actually use to paint color but that you can use as an indicator I'm gonna call this indicator for now and we're gonna fill this bubble right here with this green indicator color and right now that looks pretty funny but what we're going to do later on when we're rigging in the network view is use some color override modules and a cutter um, to make this area transparent for whatever is behind it. So to make the head part of this shape transparent. So that's pretty much it for the tutorial creating extra drawings. Stay tuned for the next tutorial part of the new pack character rigging part one rigging basics.